Dr. Gautami from Minto Eye Hospital. Today in this world of machine dependency, there are very few clinical skills which are standing out like irreplaceable. One among them is gonioscopy. And my topic for today is unveiling the angle, the gonioscopic guide. Gonioscopy, as the word suggests, it, it's a Greek word which means observation of the angle. It's a clinical technique. Sorry for the inconvenience. Yeah, gonioscopy by the word means, it's a Greek word which means observation of the angle. It's a clinical technique wherein which you observe the anterior chamber angle by using a special lens. For any technique or an instrument, if you want to know in detail, you should know the history, how it has started, how it has changed, what all new you can think about. To know the history, there's a great person called Elio Stranta who done the gonioscopy for the first time. He tried visualizing the angle of the anterior chamber in a keratoglobus eye by using a direct ophthalmoscope. This is the another, another person by name Salzman. He recognized that in a normal eye, the corneal, uh, iridocorneal angle cannot be visualized because of the phenomena called total internal reflection. And this led to the principle called, a principle of gonioscopy where Whenever the incident light is more than that of the uh, angle of the exist, uh, exit, there will be a reflection of this light, which is called as total internal reflection. And this, whenever it is less than the critical angle, it can refract out perpendicularly. Based on this, whenever the uh, lens, which is having a refractive index, which, which is equal to that of the cornea, that is 1.37, when it is placed in front of the eye, this phenomena of total internal reflection can be elevated, which led to the principle of gonioscopy. There are different types of gonioscope, direct gonioscopy and the indirect gonioscopy. In direct gonioscopy, the angle structures are visualized directly by using a different types of lenses. Whereas in the indirect gonioscopy, whatever the angle structures are visualized, these are getting reflected within the mirror and the reflection of which is seen. In direct gonioscopy, this is the technique where it can be done even in a supine position in an anesthetized patient also, where we have a light source and either a microscope or a handheld slit lamp where we place the different types of lens like corpus lens and we observe the angle of the anterior chamber directly. And these are the different types of lenses which are used for direct gonioscopy. Different like Koipis lens, Haskins lens and Richardson's lens and many others. And the main advantage of this is you can you have a greater flexibility. You can visualize all the angles directly. And you can do it in an OT setup, especially in a congenital glaucoma in kids. And this is used as both diagnostic and surgical purpose. Main disadvantage is time con consuming and because of the reflexes and the clarity in this, it's little less compared to the other technique, which has led for the little modification later. There's the indirect gonioscopy where the mirror image of the angle is visualized. And these are done using different lenses. These are two types of lenses. One is a scleral type of lens and the other one is a corneal type of lens. This is a scleral type of lens commonly used, mostly the Goldman lens. The first one is a Goldman lens. It can be a single mirror. Two mirror lens are the three mirror lens. The other types of gonioscopes are rich and the trocar lens. Coming to the corneal type of lens, it's a gold standard where the diameter of the contact of the lens is smaller compared to that of the cornea. And the different types of this are Zeiss, Poshner, Sussman's lens and the Allen Thorpe's lens. Advantage of this is can be done in an OPD setup and it is easy to perform and it is it can visualize the structures more clearly compared to that of the direct. And the disadvantage of this is it cannot be done in an OT setup and the 
uh, coupling agents are required for this and the patient cooperation is much needed in this. And there's the other types of gonioscopy called manipulative gonioscopy. Whenever you are doing the gonioscopy, when the angle structures are not seen, you can ask the patient to look towards the mirror where, and try to see the structures over the hill view called manipulative gonioscopy. And the other technique called indentation gonioscopy, wherein whenever you feel on gonioscopy, the structures are closed, you try to put a pressure in the central cornea and push the aqueous into the periphery, which will open up your trabecular meshwork by this technique. In this, can you see this is closed, it looks like a closed on angle on gonioscopy, but when you put pressure in the central cornea, it will push the aqueous into the periphery, into the trabecular meshwork, and this will open up your angle, which is called as indentation gonioscopy. This will differentiate between the uh, appositional as well as synechial angle closure. And there are different n number of indications for gonioscopy. One few among them is to classify glaucoma and in various other secondary glaucomas where you can clinch your diagnosis based upon the angle findings and to see for the different structures like neoascularization, different pigmentations, any neoplastic growth, recessions or any depositions. And therapeutically you can use it for laser trabeculoplasty and gonio-photocoagulation and when you want to break the synecae in your peripheral setup with the in a acute angle closures. Main contraindication is whenever there is an acute infection and whenever they have a corneal edema with bulle where it can rupture or immediate post-operative period where the high chances of infection is there or uh, whenever there is a trauma, either blunt or penetrating trauma in the immediate period. Main procedure of this is, there are three things, patient-related, machine-related and the doctor-related. Patient-related where you have to put the uh, topical anesthesia like proparakine and make the patient sit it comfortably in front of the slit lamp and you make sure that his uh, chin rest and the head, uh, head rest is at, placed at a proper position and the eye is at the, uh, the medial canthus at the proper level. So the next steps, everything based on individual uh, step that how you follow. And coming to the lens, there are different types where the scleral and the corneal type. In the scleral type, we have this flanges and you have, the f you have to fill this with the coupling agent like methyl cellulose. And there's a one more, one more uh, corneal type of lens where your tear film itself act like a coupling agent. And in scleral type of uh, uh, lens, you have to place it in the inferior fornix as the patient to look up and you gently uh, elevate the upper lid and ask him to look down and you place the lens into the eye and you check for any air bubbles or anything and it should be clear and it should be gentle because we are in close contact with the cornea and even with the corneal type of lens where uh, you can directly place it because this because of its smaller diameter and your tear fluid, fluid itself is acting like a coupling agent. Different angle structures are visualized in this like swell baseline, non-pigmented -pigment, trabecular and pigmented trabecular meshwork, scleral spur, ciliary body. These are the normal anatomical structure, details of which which every one of us know. And can you see in this, this is the corneal wedge where this is the point where the anterior and the posterior point is joining which is called as swell baseline, non-pigmented trabecular meshwork, pigmented trabecular meshwork and this is the scleral spur and the ciliary body bag. And these are the smaller iris processes which are joined. Coming to the interpretation, there are different grading systems based on which we can grade the angle of the anterior chamber. This is Schaffer grading where the angle between the uh, line drawn through the iris and the corneal curvature is measured. More than 35 to 40 is open, less than this will be the close where close attention has to be given. There are other grading systems like spade grading system, skies grading systems. These are all useful to identify the angle of the anterior chamber and what is the depth of it and different types of iris insertion in that. And each grading system has its own advantage when you follow it up after the procedure, like different other procedure like iridotomy and all. There are different abnormal structures that you can see in the gonioscopy. This is one among it. There is a broad brown color tissue which is extending from the iris into the corneal near the schwal baseline. This called as peripheral anterior synecae which you have to differentiate with that of these uh, iris processes. 
those are very fine and through which you can see the inner content like the trabecular meshwork and it is not obstructing your angle. These are broad based and they can obstruct your angle and can increase the pressure. These are seen in the different conditions like angle closure glaucoma, iridocornea, eye syndromes. And this is how the iris processes will look like and this is how the pass look like. And this is another picture which is showing a fine arborizing vessels in the angle that is called neovascularization of the angle seen in different conditions like neovascular glaucoma, Fuchs heterochromic iridocyclitic and chronic anterior uveitis. This is a pigmented line which is seen in front of the schwal base line. And this is not a trabecular meshwork. This looks like a pseudo trabecular meshwork. This is a pigmented deposition in front of the schwal base line, which is called sampleasis line. See, in, in case of the hyperpigmentation, like in, it may be a physiological variant if it is in all quadrants, or can be in PDS, pseudo fakikai, and post surgery, or in case of pseudo exfoliation. And then, can you see the white thing band here? This is the angle recession, which is usually seen in a blend trauma. Patient with such finding with Two or more quadrants, you have to follow up them for a longer period. They can develop glaucoma at any time. And this is the one more structure. Can you see something in the angle? This is a foreign body in the angle. And this is the red thing which is present in the Schoen's canal called blood in Schoen's canal. And it can be a physiological var variant or whenever there is a CCF or superior vena cable obstruction. This is a normal, but it is post trabeculectomy where there is a patent ostium. It can get clogged which is a reason for your uh, failure of trap. The main take home message in this is each one of us has to do gonioscopy independent of subspeciality. It can help you kinch multiple diagnoses at your doorstep instead of sending them at other places. Though it is retina or any speciality, it will help you to diagnose in the future. Thank you one and all. These are my references. And we are here united together to make the world 